In this video, we're going to start introducing the algebra of sets. I mean, this is an abstract algebra class. And although our algebraic objects like groups, rings, and fields are based upon the idea of a set, it turns out that the, the fundamental unit of mathematics here, the set itself, has some pretty important algebraic operations. So if we have two, two sets, A and B, uh, we can talk about the intersection of the sets denoted um, a intersect B, which in LaTeX you just write A backslash cap B, like so. Uh, the intersection is the set consisting of elements that belong to both A and B. And so if you've done any if you've done any study in like logic or Boolean algebra or something, intersections and logical word and are essentially interchangeable. Um, if an element belongs to A and and belongs to B, then it's part of the intersection. Uh, the union, on the, on the other hand, the union of A and B the, is denoted in the following way. A union B, uh, which we write that in LaTeX as A backslash cup B. Uh, the union is the, set of, is the set consisting of elements that belong to A or B. And in logic, this is the, uh, this is the, the this is not the, uh, in, 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 in native language, like in English, when we say the word or, we typically mean things like it's either this or that, which is often referred to as exclusive or. So if it's like, hmm, what are we going to do tonight? Well, we could go to the movie or we could go to a play, right? You know, th th these are options we could do uh, for, for our recreation for the night. And when people say or, you don't typically mean you're going to go do both. You're saying I'll do this one or the other one, but not both. In logic, when we use the word or, we actually are using the exclusive meaning of or, which means that we, we do A or B or both. One right? thing to notice here when we describe these sets is that the elements A and B themselves, sorry, the sets A and B are subsets of, of the union. So A is a subset of A union B and B is also uh, a u is a subset of a union b all of a is in there all of b is in there as, as well and so one often thinks of like venn diagrams when you describe when you draw these things so like if this is a and b the union would be all of these all of the sets right there including the overlap the overlap right here is the intersection which is also a, it's a subset of a and b and some universal properties here. The intersection A and the intersection of A and B. This is the largest set that is a subset of both A and B. That is, any other subset of A and B is a subset of the intersection. And likewise, uh, A union B is the smallest set which has A and B as a subset. Uh, so you could say this is like the least upper bound when it comes to sets containing A and B here. Now, when one describes intersections and unions, sometimes we have to have larger intersections. Like what if we intersect a larger number of sets, not just two, what if we wanna intersect like say n many sets, three sets, four sets, five sets, n for n could be any natural number here. Um, if we wanted to note a one intersect, a two intersect all the way up to a n, uh, we can abbreviate this using uh, this symbol right here. Uh, this would be a, a, basically if you think of computer science, we're writing a for loop for our intersections here. This would be the intersection of all the sets A1 through AN. This is as much like in calculus when you have your sigma notation, I equals one to N, and you add up some function F of XI star or something like that, right? Delta X, we do these Riemann sums in calculus. You look at the bottom, you have some dummy variable I. This is just the number that ranges from the two numbers. You start with one on the bottom, go up to N on the top. We can do the same thing with intersections and unions. So a big cap represents you have an iterated intersection. A big cup represents you have an iteration of unions of some time. So you take the union of the sets A1, A2, up to AN. And in LaTeX, these symbols are just going to be backslash big cup. And then if you want to put the superscripts and subscripts there, uh, what you do is when you have a symbol, whenever you follow it by an underscore, that'll do the subscript. You might need to do some curly braces, I equals one, like so. And if you want to do the superscript, superscripts in LaTeX are always done with a caret. So that's the shift six on your keyboard, caret. And you can write just an N. You don't need curly braces because there's only one symbol following that. But if you want to be proper, you could do some curly braces right there. And this will give you big cup. 
the intersection is drawn as a big cap. Big cap, like so. Uh, we say that two sets are disjoint if they're intersect, which does happen on occasion. You know, the intersection uh, will, will sh uh, sorry, the empty set will show up sometimes in surprising ways, right? Why do we care about this empty set so much if there's nothing inside of it? Well, it could be that there is some, you know, some property, some criteria that defines a set that turns out to be the empty set. We are interested in that criteria, but, you know, it might not be obvious to us from the beginning that that set turned out to be empty. Like, for example, if we define our set to be the, the set of all purple unicorns you can currently see on the screen named Hank, well, you can see that, oh, there are no purple unicorns on the screen named Hank. Um, so that set would be an empty set. This the empty set can show up in surprising ways sometimes. Consider the following three sets. One, three, five, eight is the set A. Three, five, seven is the set B. And two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? That's set C. I'm gonna do some operations with these things. It's pretty basic, the intersection of A and B. So we're looking for those elements that belong to both sets. So if you look at, if you just kind of just run through the list there, um, one belongs to A, but doesn't belong to B. So that's not in the intersection. Um, three is in both of those. So three will be in the intersection. Five belongs to both, um, but eight and seven don't belong to both. So the intersection would be the set three and five uh, that you see right there. Let me clear off the board there. So we get the intersection just fine. If we want to do the union of A and B, um, what that would look like, so we're just going to take everything that's in A, 1, 3, 5, and 8. We're going to take everything that's in B, 3, 5, and 7. And remember, repetition doesn't really matter when it comes to a set. So the fact that 3 and 5 got listed twice, you can just kind of remove it from the list. That doesn't change the set. And if you want to put it in numerical order, you can put the 7 in front of the 8. But in terms of sets, the order doesn't matter. So saying that union is 1, 3, 5, 3, uh, 1, 3, 5, 8, 3, 5, 7 is correct. Although a little bit more maybe more proper, if we want to use some etiquette, you know, like we, 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 we want to stand up when a lady enters the room or something. If we want to be proper, we could write this as one, three, five, seven, eight, but be aware that bad manners is not part of set theory in any regard. We can allow, we can allow such poor etiquette when it comes to describing sets here. Uh, so one last example of these set operations. Uh, one might be interested in computing intersections and unions to operations of like numerical arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We don't have an inherent hierarchy when it comes to set operations. That is, we don't have this priority over intersections or vice versa. Uh, and so one needs to use parentheses so that's, so we don't have ambiguous statements because the set B intersect A union C, this is an ambiguous statement. Um, is it B intersect A union C like we have in front of us or is it B intersect A union C? Those are two different sets. And I'll have you calculate this second one just to verify this. If you want to do A union C, parenthesis tell us we'll do A union C first, we're going to join together the elements of A and C. So we're going to get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, and then 8 shows up twice. Uh, so we get this union right here. Great. Now with A union C in mind, we intersect that with B. What, set or what elements belong to both sets? Well, we're going to get... I'm going to actually look at the smaller set first, right? Three belongs to both sets. Uh, five belongs to both sets, but seven doesn't belong. So the intersection of B with A union C is also three comma five, like we see there. When working with sets, it often is going to be helpful uh, to talk about this in context of a larger set, which we often refer to as the universal set. This is going to be when we start talking about the idea idea of a complement because we want to talk about what's not in the set that's given here. Uh, what's not in because we want to ask what's not in the set. If we take a set like uh, the following set, one, two, five, seven, nine, we might ask what's not in A? Well, the number, let's see, a three is not in A. Um, the number 10 is not in A. Pikachu is not in A. Um, my lost childhood memories are not in A, right? Uh, we have to kind of specify what is the universe we're talking about. And so this is often called this universal set, um, which would be called U oftentimes. And so inside of a specific context, we have to talk about what's the universe we're describing. Are we talking about the universe, the real numbers, the complex numbers, the integers? Uh, it's important to specify. The, um, otherwise, 
we get into certain logical problems and we want to so once with a specific universe nailed down we can talk about the complement of a set a uh which we're going to denote this as a prime here and this is going to be a set of all elements in the universe that are not in a so logically complements mean the same thing as the word not now other other contexts might use different symbols like a bar a c or a little twiddle a uh, we use a prime to denote complements but there is not one universally accepted symbol to represent the negation of a set uh, but as an example um, if we take the set u to be all of those positive integers one through nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine that's our universe take the set a here uh, let us specify its complement there's a typo here that i see um, if we want the things that are in U but not in A, we should have, because, you know, 1, 2 is in A, uh, we want a 3 right there, not a 2, 2 was in A. So we want 3, 3 is in U, it's not in A, 4 is in U, not in A, 5 is in A, uh, 6 is in U, but not in A, uh, 7 is in A, so we don't take it, 8 is in U, but not in A, and then 9 is in A. So we get these uh, four elements, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. These are the elements of a uh, of a prime. If we do this for b, one, two, four, we want the elements in u, not in b. Uh, we're going to grab three. You get three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, all of these elements right here. So this is how we describe the complement of a set right here. And some interesting things I want to mention about these complements here uh, is you have a set a and you enter intersected with its complement, this is always going to be the empty set because the complement by definition is taking those elements which are in that there can't be an element in both of them because if you're in A, you cannot be not in A. Uh, so the intersection is always the empty set. On the other hand, if you take the union of a set with its complement, this always gives you back the universe because A prime is the set of all things not in A that are in U. So if you're in U, you're either in A or you're not in A. I mean, that's, that's the dichotomy you get there. And so those properties hold, hold for any set in any, any universe here. Um, related to this idea um, is the idea of a set difference that we're going to find in just a moment. Um, so let's take, let's take some sets. And this take A to be the set red, green, and blue. You know, like so, so the standard, uh, just standard colors for like defining colors, maybe in a computer, like H. HTML or something, um, and we'll take then B to be the the six standard colors of the rainbow, right? Primary and secondary colors. In case you're not knowing here, purple and violet work. We're defining that to be the same thing. Some people will distinguish between them. Um, in fact, LaTeX actually says purple and violet are different. Uh, this seems crazy to me. And also, you'll notice that indigo is not present. Sorry, indigo is not a secondary or a primary color. So if we take the if we take the intersection of B with A prime, what we're looking for is we want the elements inside of B and inside A prime. But A prime is the set of the set of elements which are not in A. So we want things that are in B, but not in A. So what are what's in A? What's in B that's not in A? Well, A contains red, so that one goes away. Um, orange is in B, but not in A. Uh, yellow is in B, but not in A. Green was in A, so it's not an A prime. Blue is in A, so it's not an A prime. And then purple is in B, but not an A, like so. And so the so B intersect A prime will be orange, yellow, purple, like so. Now you might notice that with this with this example we just did here, I was able to compute the intersection of B and A prime without specifying the universal set. So is A prime can we define without a universal set? Well, not exactly, but when it comes to B intersect A prime, all I have to know is I have to know the elements that are, that are in B that are not in A prime. And so in all reality, I'm kind of using B as my universal set, so to speak, even though A itself might not be a subset of B. Uh, and so when it comes to B intersect complement, this actually will be defined as the set difference. Um, and one can actually define the set difference without the use of any universal set whatsoever. It's commonly denoted like this. Uh, so we take B slash A like that. This is the set difference. We want everything in B that's not in A. Um, some people actually use the subtraction symbol. 
uh, to define set difference, that's fine. In terms of LaTeX, you can use backslash set minus to give you uh, to give you this the, the, this symbol right here. Personally, though, um, it feels a little too slanted for me. I like the small set minus button, uh, but in terms of set theory, the two symbols are interchangeable there. And so the set difference captures everything in B that's not in A. And so the set difference A take away B, this would be A intersect B prime. Now, sometimes this could be the empty set, right? That would happen if you take away, if you take B, away from A and you get the empty set, that would translate to mean that A is a subset of B. If you take B away from A, that means everything that's in B, sorry, that everything that's in A actually belonged to B, so A was a subset. And so in general, if A is a subset of B, you're gonna get that the set difference is uh, the empty set. These two things happen if and only if, uh, just so you're aware as you're working with set differences here.